I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Andover, Minnesota in the U.S. And today I'd like to share with you some outside-the-box ideas that I created using the contents of the November 2019 Paper Pumpkin Kit from Stampin' Up! titled Winter Gifts. These monthly kits come straight to my mailbox and contain everything that I need to make fun, creative paper crafting cards and projects. This month's holiday kit comes in an exclusive box and contains supplies to make 24 stunning holiday gift tags. Inside the box is this publication with directions, tips, photos, details about the kit, and links for more information to help guide me in assembling. Plus, each box contains an exclusive stamp set and ink that I can use over and over again even after the consumables from my kit are used up. A clear block, which was included free with my first kit for mounting and using my stamps, and my scissors are the only extra supplies that I need to provide. Paper pumpkin kits are just $22 plus tax per month in the U.S. Shipping is included, you control which months you get your kits, and there's no commitment or obligation. These kits are produced through Stampin' Up! so the colors, images, and supplies always coordinate with many other Stampin' Up! products. I'll be using some of these as I share my alternate projects. You can find the items I use listed below and linked to my online store. You can also look below for links to learning more about paper pumpkin kits, starting your subscription through me so I can spoil you with exclusive ideas, gifts, and prizes, joining my Paper Pumpkin fan club on Facebook where you can see even more alternate project ideas shared daily, and if you're watching my video on YouTube, a link to my website where I've shared photos of these projects. If you're looking for ideas for past kits, visit my website at stampyourartout.com. Click on Paper Pumpkin in the top menu, then choose Recent or Older Posts. Since March of 2013, when Paper Pumpkin first began, I've been creating and sharing alternate projects so Paper Pumpkin subscribers can see that there's so many more possibilities, so many more options with those kit supplies. And that's what I'll be doing in this video. I'm excited to create with you, so let's get started. You'll notice in my video that I actually substitute the clear block that comes in your first kit and the Stampin' Spot ink pad for the larger ink pad and, the, and these blocks, which you can get in the online store. They just fit in your hands better, um, more comfortable, plus I have a ton of them. So, um, yes, so don't worry about you know owning these if you don't have them. You have these to use instead. I also like to bring in my adhesive called Snail in place of the glue dots that come in the kit, but these I love for when I'm going to put little tiny things here and there. Um, it's a little bit easier to put tiny little glue dots on small things than it is to run the snail on there. So I'll, I use this, but I also use this. Just want to point those things out. Now, the first thing that I did when I took the kit and opened it up is I divided out all these little pieces. And I ended up with this. So you get in your kit supplies to make 24 tags, 24 divided by four designs. You make six of each of these designs. So what I did is I took the elements for each one of these four tags and I laid them out here. That means I have six times as much um, in, in the rest of the kit. So this is just one sixth of the kit. The twine here, the um, metallic thread or whatever you want to call it, that is I think 48 inches and then I have 18 inches of this um, ribbon. I have uh, four small and two large of each of the sequins, the white ones and the silver ones. I have eight of these little tiny branches, eight of these little tiny leaves, two of the small snowflakes, and then one of everything else. A goal that I have with every holiday paper pumpkin kit, I've done this pretty much every year, is to show subscribers how to expand the kit or, or um, double it, or sometimes even triple it, but this time I doubled it, to see if you can get a bunch of holiday cards out of it. So instead of tags, I'm going to use this one-sixth of the kit to make eight cards. So with that, eight times six is 48. You should be able to, by copying this design that I'm going to show you, you should be able to make 48 Christmas slash holiday cards with the contents of your kit and some added product. 
I'm bringing in for simplicity some pre-cut and scored cards and envelopes. These are our silver edged, um, silver foil edge note, uh, just cards, sorry, they're not note cards, they're regular size cards, and then they have these matching envelopes to them. So my first card is going to use the pool party-ish, the light blue rectangle, the bird, and three of these leaves. I'm actually going to use the, um, the glue dots that come in the kit. I'm going to lift up a glue dot and put it on the back side. I think I have, yeah, so I, I really like the glue dots for small areas. I really do. Um, I'm going to use my finger to just kind of make those leaves bend upwards a little bit. And I've already got glue dots on the back of my bird and on the back of these leaves. The next thing I'm going to do is mount my stamp. When you get your stamps, you just peel away that plastic layer. Keep it though to keep your stamps protected, but here I've peeled off a stamp. I'm going to lay that onto my desktop and pick it up diagonally with my block. I'm picking it up diagonally because for those of you that are newer stampers, um, it's a trick. It's, it's, it kind of tricks you into not relying on the edges of the block when you're stamping. You're looking at the actual stamp image instead. And our stamps are photopolymer, so they're clear. You can see through them. We're going to open up our ink pad, and again, I'm using the larger ink pads because they're convenient for me. And we're going to start by stamping directly onto the top left corner of our blue rectangle. So you just tap it lightly onto your ink pad, and we're going to stamp it in the upper corner. And then we're going to take our bird and we're going to lay that down onto our lower right corner. Then I'm going to grab some of the silver twine and I'm just grabbing an end of it. I have about five inches and I'm just going to make two little rabbit ears with it. Loop the uh, Put the loops over the top of each other, bring the loop through. It's like I'm tying a knot with the loops. And I'm bringing that through, grabbing it. This is a little stiffer than most of our twine. And I'm pulling it tight. So I'm just going to make a quick little bow with that. Adding a glue dot to the bottom, rolling it just a little bit so it's more on top of itself. Adding the bow. And there I have a layer for this first card. And I'm going to add that right to the front. The next card design actually does better with small stampin' spots, so I'm going to set my larger green ink pad aside, and I'm going to slice open my shaded spruce ink pad. And now we're going to bring a little humor into the video, because I don't open these ink spots on camera too often, and I, I did it too rough. <laughs> did it too fast. Anyways, the ink spots are perfect for um, for inking up small portions of the stamps. <laughs> now I have stained fingers. Um, but I, I, because a lot of you may be new subscribers, I'm going to use the real red ink pad that's large as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the ink that's in the corner for the berries for this holly. And you can see I did, oh my gosh, I did like super good on just getting the red corner. Thank goodness for clear stamps, right? Now, if I had an issue, I could always come in and remove some of the color with a damp paintbrush. This is our aqua painters, but you can just use a paintbrush or whatever. I'm not getting that one very, very well, so hang on just a second. I'm going to try to ink it a little bit more. Okay, so I've got that inked up. Come in, I'm going to remove some of the red color here that's on the leaves. And if you get a little bit, that's okay too. And then, um, through the beauty of television, <laughs> through videos, and I forget that these ink pads are slightly different in the surface uh, than these. These are firm foam, so you barely have to tap on them. And these have that um, felt, uh, the fabric type top so you have to press a little bit harder. Then what I want to do is I want to breathe on the ink because it's been sitting there for a while. So I'm going to grab my card. I'm going to breathe with my warm breath and I'm going to stamp it down in this lower corner. And now I have my little cluster of holly leaves and berries. And next I'm going to grab these two pieces and we're going to add that to 
the bottom strip of our pool party. But first, let's let's um, stamp that with our. Let's go ahead and stamp it with our green ink. So we'll bring this pad back in. Stamp the word peace. Flip it over. Add some adhesive along the bottom. Then we're going to grab that red strip and just stick it right along there. And then we'll trim up the end to make it angle and match up like that. We'll flip this over. And again, if you wanted to, you could do dimensionals here. But this piece will just go like this. My third card, we get to add some of this shaded spruce cotton ribbon. And we're going to be bring in the sequins, the silver ones. So the first thing we'll do is we'll actually just add this directly to the front of our card and we're angling it this way this time so it's kind of an up and down look and we'll center that just below the silver edge at the top. We're going to stamp on this piece with the word piece <laughs> and that's going to position here. We're going to pop that up with dimensionals And if you go right through the middle, then you can tuck these little holly leaves underneath. The nice thing about the holly leaves, though, is you can also just add them. Let's see here. Let's place it like that. And if we just kind of position where they're going to go, they're going to tuck in like this. Then we can pull this away, and we can add dimensionals directly to the card instead. And that will hold down those fun little holly leaves like that. So now we have to move this guy. We'll just bring him over here. Taking off the release paper of all of those. And we want that little ribbon to kind of go off to the edge here so that you can see the edge of it in silver. We'll grab our ribbon and we're going to just do a little bow. So my estimate, let's measure that really quick. That is about seven to eight inches. We're going to have extra ribbon and twine. We're ending up that way so that you don't have to have exact measurements this time. Again, for ribbons, small embellishments, these glue dots are wonderful. They're just tedious for large areas. <laughs> And that's why I like this stuff. But for the ribbon, there we go. And then we just covered up the hole that's on that tag so that that doesn't show. And then we've got these wonderful little sequin pieces. So we'll just add those here and there on the card. These little leaves were not holding down <laughs> with, the, with the dimensionals. So I pulled them off because they were easy to pull off and stuck little glue dots under them. Okay, that one's now done. For the fourth card, I'm going to use the stamp that says Let It Snow. We'll use that in the green ink, the shaded spruce. And I'm going to lay these snowflakes down where I feel like, I don't know, where I think that they should go. Something like that. And I'll have some twine going maybe this way up the side with a bow. So I think I want to stamp the Let It Snow right in this spot here. Again, since the ink's been sitting on the stamp for a while, I can either re-ink it or breathe on it. I'm going to stamp it about two inches down. Again, using the block, or not the block, the, the stamp as a guide to where to stamp. We'll grab these, bring them off to the side for a minute, and now we're going to wrap our twine. If you don't want to use this much twine, you could totally do something different. I'm using about, let's see, eight and a half, uh, would that be 16, 17 inches plus another, another four, so about 21 inches. I'm just bringing it around again, tying a knot and then tying a bow. I think with twine it's easiest to tie a knot and then tie your bow. And tie it in the middle so that you have even amounts on each end. 
make sure it's straight. Make sure the, the ribbon is parallel to where you are uh, to, the, to the score line of the card. Again, we'll do our knot. Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> we'll do our knot, and then we'll come in with a bow. My green fingers just aren't working today. There we go, there's our bow. I normally have no issues. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we've got our little bow and I've added dimensionals to the middles of the back of the larger snowflakes. And on this one, I'm gonna grab one of those glue dots. It'll sit closer to the actual card, the card front. Okay, so now I'm going to just kind of lay them again where I think that they'll best look and I can lay them upside down so that that way I don't have to set them exactly where I want them quite yet and I think that looks pretty good so now I can just flip them over and put them in place. These sequins can come in and accent other parts of the card. We have the silver twine, so why not have some silver snow? And there's that finished card. The next one, we're gonna be using this tag, a couple of the green leaves, and some of the other sequins. So we'll stamp, let it snow again, and we'll stamp it in this white strip. We're gonna grab our tag, insert our uh, shaded spruce twine or ribbon, just a little bit of it, about four inches, and about four inches of the silver twine. Tie it in a knot. And then we're going to add some sequins. And then we'll just trim up the ribbon a little bit so it fits inside the card. Trim up the twine a little bit. And then you can take and use your fingernail to kind of fray the twine, kind of unravel it so it gives kind of a little unbraided look. Makes the glitz go a little further too. And there's the next card. The next card, I inked up our Love and Joy stamp and stamped it directly down over the top of the white banner, which I couldn't do with camera in my way, so I had to do it off camera. Um, just come straight down on top of it. We're going to cut off the loop part of our tree, because this is not a tag. We're going to add the tree to our card front. And I suggest to give it more dimension that you come in with your fingers and kind of bend those little branches out a little bit. In fact, there's a tool. It's called a bone folder. And if you kind of go like this with it, you will get that same effect. Probably should have done this before adding the adhesive. But it just makes the branches kind of seem a little bit more real because they're popping out at you. All right, so that's going to go right down here, and you want to leave a little bit of room at the top and kind of shove it in the lower left-hand corner, making sure that not the base of the tree, but the trunk of the tree is going parallel to the um, side edge of the card, the score line of the card. This little guy we're going to put on with a glue dot. See these glue dots? You shouldn't throw these glue dots away. They come in handy. And that's going to go at the top of the tree like a little star, only it's a snowflake. We're going to grab one of these sequins, add that to the middle just for a little extra sparkle. Put dimensionals on the back side of this, and then we'll add this to the front of the card, wherever it looks right. 
I think about there looks pretty good. We're going to grab just a little bit more of this ribbon, about two, maybe three inches of it at the most. Tie a little tiny knot in it. Trim it up. Grab a glue dot. And I think that that ribbon will look good probably right underneath. So we're just going to put that glue dot right there. Peel off the backing. And we're going to tip it up and tuck it under. And now we have a cute little Christmas tree card. The next one is our deer card. So we're going to use our deer. We're going to use, well that's our buck, isn't it? <laughs> we're going to use a bunch of these little branches. We're going to use three of them. And you could use the white side if you wanted snowy branches, but we're going to use the green side because we have it up against white paper. And then we'll use the red circle. And I really like how they put the red circle behind the deer. I thought it really made the deer stand out a little bit more. So we're going to do the same thing. And you'll also notice that the deer's body is curved a bit. So we're going to attach the deer with a couple dimensionals to that red circle. And you can even put a couple glue dots in other places if you want your deer to be kind of attached down somewhat more in another area. I think, you know what, I'm going to leave the glue dots off. Um, we're just going to use that. Maybe, maybe one by the head? Gosh, I don't know. I like the curvature of it, but I don't want him to look like he's not curved anymore. All right, so we've got that. We're going to put snail on the back of the red circle. The sentiment that we're going to use is the made with love one, but you know what you can do with these stamps is you can cut them. So instead of having it say made with love, we now have a stamp that says with love. And I can keep this here in case I want to stamp that on some kind of, I don't know, gift that I made or whatever. But um, at this point, I see myself using with love a lot more than I see myself using made with love. So now that we've trimmed up the edge of that, and you want to trim it good because it's not as curved down as the other portion of the stamp, we're going to mount that onto our block. And that's going to get stamped in the upper corner. So um, our deer, if we just kind of lay this right here, our deer will get positioned like this, somewhat centered. Want to make sure that he's looking upright so that he's not tipped over or anything. Um, and then we're going to stamp the with love right over here. Okay? We'll stamp that with the real red ink. Although this could be stamped with the green. And then these branches will come out from behind next to the deer's head. I've already tied some twine about four inches into another tiny little bow and that's just going to get attached down by the neck of the of the deer like so and then we've got sequins to add so for the little tiny branches your adhesive is not going to cover the whole branch it's going to go beyond right um, yeah it's going to go beyond so you're going to see it on both sides and that's okay because it's getting tucked under like that And there is our seventh card. And our last one, we're going to use the sled. We're going to use the little blue banner piece, five of these branch pieces, and a little bit more of the silver twine. We'll first stamp our sentiment onto our sled. I love how Paper Pumpkin did their how-to video this month for their kit. Um, the, the gal who was demonstrating went like this, which meant tie this twice in a little knot. So you want to take the end of it, tie it in a knot once, and then tie it in a knot again. That's what that meant, if you weren't sure. And that'll make a nice thick little ball here on the end, so that when you pull it, it's not going to, well, maybe we need three. But it's not going to go through as much as if you just had it tied once 
Let's do it three times. Let's make sure. I might be cinching it too, too tight. That's probably my problem. There we go. So then you've got your, your, um, you know, your string, your rope on your sled. So we'll bring it through this way and we'll trim it up because we have too much. We don't need this much twine. We'll probably tie the knot right around there. And like we did on that other card, we can fray the end a little bit, make it look more like real rope. So now we've got our fun little bobsled here. We've got our words, and our words are going to pop up with dimensionals. So we might as well add those to the back right now. All of these branches will get a glue dot on the back. We'll adhere the sled straight down on the card. I'm not sure if I said put it up on dimensionals, but I didn't mean to. <laughs> That's going to go straight down on the front of our card. And this ribbon, or this uh, rope, can go off to the side a little bit. Okay. And then our With Love can come down here going parallel with the bottom edge of the card, and we'll add in the branches. See? We didn't use all the twine or all the ribbon. <laughs> so you should have a tiny bit left over when you're done making your 48 Christmas cards. There we go. Eight cards times six, 48 cards from one kit with the help of the silver foiled edge note cards. You'll need, let's see, you get 20 per pack. So you would need um, three packs of those. Uh, and then you would get, um, you could add in the red ink, which would be another 750. And you'd be set to go for your Christmas cards if you have 48 people to send them to. Let me show them all to you. Ta-da! <laughs> I made two sets of these cards, by the way, and I wanted to share, share something with you that you may have discovered along the way if you are a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, um, if you got the last month's kit, and if you know your colors really well. So it lists on the back side of our pamphlet, uh, Real Red as the red color, and it's actually Poppy Parade. It's a lot closer to Poppy Parade. Here are the two different colors. So this is Real Red. This is Poppy Parade, and you can see that it's a Poppy Parade color. But I started out with Real Red, and it works. <laughs> and I also um, created a whole other set of cards, which I'm going to share with you, with the Real Red in the designer paper that I supplemented in for an extra supply. So you can, if you're just going to go with this version, you can totally use Poppy Parade ink instead of Real Red. Now let me share with you the other version. So this is another take on those same cards. Uh, for these cards, I used Whisper White as the base, and I, I, I cut and scored each card base. I also used the, um, the, just the regular white medium envelopes. They come in packs of 40, so I invested in two packs of 40 for my 48 cards. I uh, also added in some designer series paper. As you can see, this is from the Let It Snow. A specialty pack of paper and I used the flip side, the side that most people aren't using because it's more of a background look. And then I also brought in some 12 Tidings glitter enamel dots on a couple cards right here and right here so that my berries uh, on my holly look a little bit more festive. So here's the differences on the cards. You can see I've adjusted where this one lies and I've got some designer series paper under there. On this one you can see I just added the designer series paper under this one here, I have it at the top, and of course the berries are there. On the snow card, it's a, really a different layout altogether. The silver twine is in a different direction, um, and I've got this piece that was over here, um, over here instead, and let's just look at that one then. So there's where that piece was before. I've added some holly berries in there and taken off the um, little sequins, and I moved them over to the reindeer card 
The reindeer car you can see also has some designer series paper with it, um, but it's not all the way to the top so that I could still stamp my message onto the paper, but I've got a few more sequins in there. And then the sled card um, looks pretty much the same, except I flipped this piece over because I wanted the white side so that it didn't contrast with the, uh, the paper underneath. And then the tree card, I added some red behind it rather than blue because the green tree stood out a lot more against the red versus uh, the blue snow background, even though we don't usually have red skies, but it, it works. <laughs> so that is what I did. And then I'm just going to give you a little tip. One thing that's wonderful about using your own cardstock and creating your own card bases is that you can, I've got these stuck down so that they hold, but you can make these long um, you know, vertical cards with that, and you can also have the regular, sorry, I stuck them together so that they wouldn't fall, fall apart when I was showing them to you, um, but I also have uh, this, this size here. So they're both a half sheet of cardstock, but they're in two different directions, if that makes sense. So I'm going to quickly just show you. You can take your cardstock, your 8.5 by 11, you can cut it this way to get uh, and fold it in half to get a, ha a, a full size card or you can cut it this way and fold it in half. So if you like my designs and you want to turn your 24 tags into 48 holiday cards, the price difference is basically $10 more to add a little bit more color. So I hope you enjoyed those. I have another project. For this project you're going to need a stapler and some tear and tape adhesive, the trimmer, some 3x6 gusseted bags, and a couple of coordinating card stocks. I'm choosing this uh, shaded spruce color and the poppy parade. Um, I'm making two separate bags so you only need, you really only need one of these colors but um, I'm going to make two versions. So we're going to take and cut our card stock to 3 inches by 8.5 and then we're going to take and cut it this way because you can take, if you cut this in half at four and a quarter inches, you can actually get two, uh, two bag um, base pieces out of one piece here. So let's take and score this. Let's score it at two inches. And this will sit in the bottom of our bag. Now if we wanted to make a second bag, we would use this one. But we're going to do our second bag with the shaded spruce color. Let's start with shaded spruce and one of our gusseted bags. When you take your gusseted bag, you're going to open it up all the way. You're going to like put your fist into it. And then you're going to insert the scored and folded cardstock so that the two inch portion is going in first. And you want to guide it to the front of the bag. And then as you press, you're going to see that it flattens out and it becomes more of like a standing bag this way, especially if we add a little bit of candy, which every bag should have, right? So we'll just put some Hershey's Kisses in there. And then this top portion of the bag, we're just going to fold over and we're going to leave about an inch at the top there. We're going to staple it. And I would recommend stapling from the back to the front. That way your um, staple, the, the part of the staple that has the sharper parts is going to be facing forward and will be covered up. This portion will be exposed. So now you've got your standing bag and we're going to attach a tag to it. So this tag will go right on the top like that and we're going to decorate it up. Let's first start by stamping on this banner piece. Oh, and actually, I want to stamp it so that it's to the right side, like that. And then we're going to, and I've already attached the bird with the glue dots from the kit, we're going to add this right here, and it's going to be coming in from the left, so it's not going to be centered, and we're going to trim that portion off. It's going to be put up on dimensionals, and we need some of the holly leaves there. So let's add the dimensionals. And I've already added glue dots to the back sides of these leaves. Next we're going to poke out the hole at the top 
And we're going to add our ribbon. You'll flip it over and then you'll add two strips of tear and tape adhesive about an inch high. And then after you've done that, you'll peel off the release paper and attach it to the bag. And if you'd like to, you can actually put like a, a handwritten message on here before you attach it to the bag. It's a little bit harder to write on it once you have the bag attached. But now you have a fun little gift to give to someone who is hosting a party or um, a neighbor, a work, uh, um, a fellow work friend. So there's one. I'm going to show you the other version. Of these two treat bag versions, this is the one that I thought of doing first, and I was actually going to make it kind of funny. Um, <laughs> but then the deer was so pretty, um, so handsome, that I just I couldn't bear to do it. Uh, and then I changed my mind at the last minute, and I decided to add this little script here so we can just print it off our computer, tuck it in there, and it says, You've been naughty, so here's a scoop. All you get is reindeer poop gift wrapped. So I didn't, I ran out of like, um, I don't know, what are they called? Chocolate chips. I was going to put chocolate chips in there or something like that. My boys are at an age where they eat me out of house and home. I think that I have things in the cupboard and they're gone. Um, in fact, this is not filled with all Hershey's Kisses because I only had a few of those left, not knowing that my kids are eating them. So I had to put some Hershey nuggets in there too. So that's my story. This was supposed to be be funnier and now I, I decided to be funny anyways. Um, but you could also make this reindeer noses. You could put a little red um, glimmer dot on there from the 12 tidings. Here they are. The 12 tidings uh, glimmer, um, what are they called? Glitter enamel dots. So you could put, you know, like a, a Rudolph nose on there and fill the bag with a bunch of red hot candies or candies that are wrapped in red and then you would have your funny reindeer noses <laughs> gift. There we go. Yay, I got it off. But there, one more project. I share more alternate ideas than the ones that you see in these videos. I also um, have ideas that are exclusive for my subscribers, but two other times in the month I also share on my blog. So if you visit my blog and the next one is coming up on November 28th, 2019, you'll be able to see the um, cards that I'm going to be inspired by for my scrapbook page layout. And this is just a little sneak peek of that card that inspired these pages. To prepare the title piece for my page, I'm going to ink up just a portion of this stamp. Stamp it down. Clean it off, ink up the other portion. I'm using Tuxedo Black Memento ink. And now I have the title of my page. I'm going to be using 12 by 12 Whisper White for the background, but I'm going to bring in a couple colors. I'm going to bring in Shaded Spruce, I'm going to bring in Basic Black. I'm going to bring in Poppy Parade cardstock and I'm going to use a couple other punches, the two and a quarter inch circle punch and the starburst punch. For the main focal point for the page, I have an eight and a half by four inch piece of shaded spruce. I also have a three by four piece of basic black and I'm going to put my cardinal in the middle on dimensionals. This piece is going to get tied around by the base of the cardinal and have a little bow over here. So I'm just curving my cardstock so I can adjust where the ribbon is. I want it at the base of the cardinal, but I kind of want it tucked underneath him. And you can see I sort of centered him so he has about the same amount of black on each side, but it makes it feel more balanced by putting the bow right there. I'm going to trim up the ends. The next piece that I need 
is the title piece with the words. I've punched out a two and a quarter inch circle punch, the um, starburst punch, and for the starburst punch, I'm gonna actually add that on dimensional so that it has a bit of a shadow behind it. And then the Let It Snow piece will just appear straight down. I have one more section that's gonna be at the top, and this is a two inch by four inch piece of shaded spruce. The rest of the pieces are little embellishments. So we're gonna bring in the page real quickly and we can start assembling it. I'm not pressing this piece down too hard because I wanna be able to tuck in some leaves underneath. I'm now gonna take the backings off of the glue dots and we'll add them. We're gonna add these holly leaves underneath this circle. And again, if you just curl with your fingers or a bone folder, it gives it a lot of a lot of dimension. And I added the glue dot to the green side because against the black, it just looks so much better with the white. And then we'll add a snowflake up in here because the theme is let it snow. And then the last snowflake we can add down here. We'll do some more embellishments with like little glitzy stuff, but now we're gonna work on the photo mats. I used Poppy Parade for the photo mats on this side and I used Basic Black for this side. The measurement of this one is five by seven. The measurement for this one is six by four. And the measurement for this one is three and a half by two and a half. On this page, I've also got a little finished part here. This is um, four and a quarter by five and a half, four and a quarter by five and a half, four and a quarter by five and a half, four and a quarter by um, three. And then this last portion is two and a quarter by four and a quarter. I did the same thing that I did over here to this, except I made the ribbon go up and down and I tied it in a knot. And then I just added the little embellishments with glue dots. I did stick this one all the way down with glue dots. And now I'm gonna bring in some of the snowflakes. Now it's time to bring in the um, Tuxedo Black Memento ink pad again and we're going to stamp some snowflakes. We're going to stamp them right next to the other ones. Yeah, I'm just keeping it real for you guys. <laughs> that kind of thing happens to all of us, doesn't it? So we're just trading papers. We're just swapping it out. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want the snowflakes there anyways. <laughs> Hold on to the block. All right, there. So every page that I make has an area where I can journal. And a smart thing that I do, so I don't have issues like this with my writing, is that I take and type it up on the computer, and then I print it off onto either the Whisper White cardstock, if it will go through the printer, or I print it off of just regular typing paper. And I measure, of course, and, and make sure that the column's gonna fit. I type it out, stick it on the page. So I've left a couple journaling areas for this layout. I've got one down here that kind of talks about the photos over here and one over here. And that's it as far as the layout, but we're gonna add some of these twill tidings um, glitter enamel dots. I think I'm gonna add the big one here just to have some berries. And there's our finished layout. So there's one page right there and there's the other page. Oh boy, I made a lot. <laughs> now that you've watched my video, I hope you can see that there is so much more to these kits than meets the eye. With just a few extra supplies and some imagination, you can go beyond and make so much more with these super affordable kits. 
I hope you gained some inspiration from what I've shared. Thank you for watching. It builds creativity to think outside the box. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can catch more paper pumpkin videos that I've shared using pass kits and more that I'll share with future kits. Also, be sure to visit my website at stampyourartout.com so you can view close-up photos of these projects, see photos of other paper pumpkin kit ideas in future and past posts, and see many other great ideas that I share using Stampin' Up! products. You'll find my website link in my description below. If you want to get spoiled with extra goodies, gifts, prizes, and extra exclusive Paper Pumpkin Project ideas, remember to get your subscriptions started with me as your demonstrator, Rachel Tessman in Andover, Minnesota. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.